Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 5.3, polynomial functions. We're going to get things started off today with some vocab words. First vocab word is a polynomial. A polynomial is a monomial or a sum of monomials. And when I say sum, that could be adding or subtracting. Now, something new here, a degree of a polynomial is the greatest degree in the polynomial. And then leading coefficient, when the polynomial is written in descending order from left to right, so the powers or the degrees get smaller, the, it's the coefficient of the first term. So let's use this polynomial as an example. This 4 would be the leading coefficient because it is written in descending orders for powers or degrees. Now this 3 would be the degree of the polynomial. And I also just want to point out in case we didn't know that this 12 is the constant term of the polynomial. Now, let's go ahead and write these polynomials where the exponents decrease from left to right or descending order. So first one up is number 1. Now, what is my biggest power? This 3. So that term is going to go first. So it's going to be 5n to the third. And then what is my next highest degree? This n to the first. So it's going to be plus 2n. And then my constant term minus 9. So then the degree of this polynomial is right there, so it's 3. The leading coefficient is what is attached there, so it's going to be 5. Now how about with number 2? What's my highest power? Well here I have a 4, but remember when we have variables attached to each other, we have to add them for the degree, so we have 5 here. Well here we come close, but this one's only going to be a total of 3. So now this one's going to go first. Make sure we take the negative along with it. So it's negative x to the fourth y plus this guy. So it's plus x squared y and then plus 15xy and our constant term plus 3. Now what is the degree here? Remember again when we have variables multiplied to each other we have to add up their powers so that has a power of 5. So that degree would be 5. What is the leading coefficient? A negative but a negative what? How many of these guys do we have? A negative 1. So our leading coefficient is negative 1. Some more vocab words. A polynomial, polynomial in one variable is just basically all the variables in the polynomial are the same letter. And then a polynomial function is a continuous function that can be described by a polynomial equation in one variable. So, what does that mean to us? That means that we're going to find w of negative 5 and of positive 3. Now, this would be a polynomial in one variable because it only has one letter. Now, what do we have to do? This negative 5 takes the place of this x. So when we go to this function, this negative 5 is going to take the place of those x's. So let's go ahead and try it. So I'm going to plug it in here and here. We have 2 times negative 5. That's going to be cubed plus 3 times negative 5 and then minus 12. Now ladies and gentlemen, please make sure that we follow our order of operations. Order of operations tells us that we have parentheses then exponents. Well this has an exponent so it's going to be 2 and then it's going to be times a negative 125 because negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 is a negative 125. Now we can multiply here after we did our exponents, so it's going to be negative 15 minus 12. Keep going, we come up with a negative 250 minus 15 minus 12. Plug it all in our calculator, we get a, get a new negative 277. And what gives us that? It is W of negative 5 equals negative 277. Now if you don't have the W of negative 5, not that big a deal, but I do need to see this negative 277. Now let's try W of 3. Again, that 3 is going to go in for all those X's because here this 3 replaces that X. So let's try it. We have 2 times 3 cubed plus 3 times 3 minus 
12. Ladies and gentlemen, please, please, please make sure exponents go first before anything else or after parentheses but before multiplication and division. So it's 2 times 3 to the third is 27 plus 9 minus 12. Simplifying here, we come up with 54 plus 9 minus 12. Punch it all in your calculator. You come up with 51. What gives you 51? W of 3 gives us 51 for our answer, what we're looking for. Now with 4, a little bit different. Now we're given a couple different functions and we're asked to find each value. So here it says C of y squared. Well, notice this y squared takes the place of that x. So I'm going to plug this y squared into here and here. So let's try it. We have 4 from our function. Now I'm going to replace that x, just the x, just the x with a y squared. All right. I'm going to bring that cube down. And then it's going to be minus 5. And then again, just the y squared that replace, replaces the x, that squared, plus 2. Now what do we do with powers to powers? We have to multiply them, so now it turns into y to the 6th, bringing down my 4 with it, and then it's minus 5. Again, we have another power to a power, so here to there, turns into y to the 4th, plus 2. Now, we just go ahead and combine like terms. There are no like terms, but I'm going to remove the parentheses just so it looks a little bit cleaner. We have 4y to the 6th minus 5y to the 4th plus 2. Now looking at 5. Well, this 4 now is front of the d of x. Our d of x function is written right here. Notice how we do not replace our variable. This 4 is also in front of. 6x squared minus 10, all right, is in front of the function. So when we write it, we have 4. And now what is our d of x function? Our d of x function is right here. So it's going to be 6x squared minus 10. Now what do we do with that 4 in front of the parentheses? We distribute to every single term inside the parentheses to get 24x squared minus 40. Now looking at 6, as I flip the page, it's going to stay with the same functions. I just want a little bit more room to work. Yes, it looks a little bit messy, but it's not bad as we combine everything we just learned. So here, we have 3 in front of our C of A. Well, I'm replacing this X now with an A. So that A is going to go in there and there. So let's try it. We have 3, and then it's going to be times... 4, and now going in for x, it's going to be a a, and that's going to be cubed. Only the a is going to be cubed. Then it's going to be minus, still from this function, minus 5. And then instead of an x, it's an a squared plus 2. And now I close that up, and I'm going to add, right? Now this 2 is in front of the d function, so I'm going to put that 2 in front of the d function. Now what goes in for my x? All of this a plus 1 is going to go in for all my x's. So we have 6 and then an a minus 1. That is going to be squared, right? Because this a minus 1 just went in for that x. And then what else do we have? We still have a minus 10. We close it up. So let's take care of our parentheses first. I'm going to clean both of these up right now. So it's going to be 3 times 4a to the third minus 5a squared plus 2. Now plus 2 times as I rewrite 6. And now I'm going to take care of this parenthesis, right? Well, we have a minus 1 and a minus 1. So this, I'm going to take care of a step so it can save myself some writing, turns into a squared minus 2a plus 1, and then I still have that minus 10. Now, I'm going to distribute this 6. So I have 2, and then it's going to be 6a squared minus 12a plus 6 minus 10. 
Now, as I clean it up one more time, this here turns into negative 4. What do I have to do with this 2? I have to distribute it to every single term. So it's going to be 12a squared minus 24a minus 8. What do I have to do with this guy? I have to distribute that 3 to everything inside of there. So it's going to be a 12a cubed minus 15a squared and then plus 6 and then we have or adding it to there. So now we're going to combine like terms. Starting with cubes, we're going to have 12a cubed minus here and there. So it's going to be a minus 3a squared minus 24a and then some more like terms here and there, which is minus 2 for your final answer. Now some more vocab words. Odd degree functions are odd number of real zeros. Even degree functions now have even number of real zeros. And now end behavior will touch more on the next slide is the behavior of the graph of f of x or y as x approaches positive infinity. We represent positive infinity with a plus and now this would be the infinity sign like a sideways 8 or negative infinity with a negative and again infinity sign. What do these problems look like? We will be given the graph of the polynomial function. So starting with this graph here, this is a graph of a polynomial function. We are asked to describe the end behavior. We are always going to start at the left side, at the negative side. Also, we're going to say that f of x approaches with an arrow. Well, f of x is the y, right? f of x would be the y. What is the end over here doing? It is going up. So this f of x approaches positive infinity as x approaches negative infinity. And why do I say x approaches negative infinity? Notice how I work my way out from the origin. This is the way I'm going towards negative infinity, right? All my negative numbers. What is happening to my f of x? It is going up. It is getting bigger, right? It is going towards positive infinity. One, two, three, four, a million, ten million infinity up there. So the more I keep going this way, the more I keep going up. Now let's direct our attention over here. On this side, it is going up. So we have f of x, right, because it's our y, approaches positive infinity as x approaches so now what is my x doing i'm getting farther away from zero towards the positive so x is ap approaching positive infinity then now i'm going to compare this graph to this graph again starting with the left side here f of x approaches well what's what's it doing here it's going up so it's positive infinity as and then x is going away, right? So it's as x approaches negative infinity. And then here, what's the bottom doing? Or what's the right side doing? f of x now approaches negative infinity because it's going down as x is getting or is going towards positive infinity. You will like odd degree or even degree because you're just looking at the end part. This is going up and it's going up. So if it is going up, it is going to be an even degree polynomial, even degree. And since this is going up and it is going down, it doesn't matter if the start is going up or the, the end is going up. If it's facing two opposite ways, we have an odd degree polynomial and then finally state the number of real zeros real zeros are the number of times that it goes through the x the it goes through the x axis so this has this graph has four real zeros so it has four real zeros and then this guy how many times does it go through the x axis this guy has three real zeros and that does it for section 5.3, polynomial functions. Good.